Nash equilibrium in the personality game, Ken Mogi, Sony Computer Science Laboratories, Tokyo. With the advent of artificial intelligence systems and robots, what is the uniqueness of human brain? Charles Spearman came up with this idea of general intelligence and he proposed Spearman's G factor, which he said correlated with many aspects of human intelligence. Recently, there have been studies on the neural basis for general intelligence. Within humans, there's a spectrum of intelligence. However, compared to artificial intelligence, we are all superseded. Nobody can beat artificial intelligence in the game of Go nowadays. So what are humans to do? Artificial intelligence systems are not bored and can keep maximum attention for a long time. On the other hand, humans are bored and act on impulses. But therein actually lies human personality. Artificial intelligence is hallmarked by maximum performance. On the other hand, humans have the benefit of a wide range of personality. Some people argue that artificial intelligence systems exhibit only the busy child personality within that narrow spectrum. So if you approach the human brain from either personality or intelligence aspect, in the near future, it will become more important to take the view of personality. Still the score, personality models are descriptive based on the lexical hypothesis. The challenge is how to make models of personality dynamic, which could be implemented in artificial systems. We need a game theoretic approach to personality. The big five model of personality describes human personality in terms of openness, conscientiousness, extraversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And recent years, there have been studies on the neural qualities of personality. When you assess your personality, you can evaluate by yourself or you can receive evaluation by others. And in general, there is a dissociation between these two evaluations. We asked 20 subjects to evaluate the personality of themselves and others within a group of 22 in total. It is important that the, sub the subjects belong to an almost complete graph that they knew each other. There were two stages. In the first stage, the subjects gave personality evaluation of the self and others, as well as the estimation of the personality evaluation by others of the self and the confidence level. In stage two, the feedback of others' personality evaluation of the self was given, uh, based on which the subjects answered on the level of anxiety and behavior change along the line of others' evaluation. They also answered about the confidence level. So in personal assessment, you can assess yourself. In addition to that, you can have evaluation from the others. And on top of that, you have a theory of mind type analysis of how others would see your personality. So it is important to, and interesting to compa compare these two dissociations. Our data shows that subject can infer personality evaluation by others as different from self-evaluation, and it is quite accurate. So there occurs a cognitive dissonance situation where mental stress or discomfort is experienced by an individual who holds two or more contradictory beliefs, ideas, or values at the same time, in this case as regards personality. So we have dissociation of personality evaluation, and we have cognitive dissonance. As a result, when the personality evaluation from others uh, feedback, uh, the subject would experience anxiety. Here's a correlation between other self-evaluation distance and anxiety. It is found that subjects feel anxiety when there's dissociation in evaluation between self and others in agreeableness. On top of that, we could also have behavior change. The subject evaluates the self, the others evaluate the personality of the subject, and the subject tries to induce a behavior change in his or her personality in line with others' expectations. Correlation between other self-evaluation distance and behavior change shows that subjects tend to behave according to others' expectations on openness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. In addition to these effects, there could be a change in confidence. The data suggests that after exposure to other evaluations, the subjects become significantly less confident of their own personality evaluation. 
Another interesting question is, do accuracies of self-evaluation as an evaluation correlate? This analysis shows that there is no significant correlation between self other and other self personality evaluation distances, meaning those who can assess their own personality accurately in the social context do not necessarily evaluate others' personality accurately. So we have studied here self-evaluation of personality, theory of mind of others' evaluation of personality, and the actual evaluation of personality by others. Based on these parameters, we could have cognitive dissonance resulting in anxiety and behavior change. Personality has been regarded as to be constructed in the social context. In the personality game, we exchange interactions based on each other's perception of personality, where it is important to strike a balance between self-assertion and conformity to expectations. So, in the exchange of communication, uh, there's a personality game in the sense that uh, you need to strike a balance between assertion and expectation so that to optimize utility. Here's a hypothetical pair of function for the personality game in which the utility comes from expressing one's true personality and conforming to others' expectations to facilitate communication. So this kind of hypothetical high payoff table in a personality game leads to two cases of Nash equilibrium. So either the players can cooperate to achieve maximum payoff, or they can go with their own image of personality to be satisfied with a smaller but stable payoff. Personality game in this formulation is equivalent to the stag hunt. If they cooperate, they can have a stag, but if they don't, they each have rat, rabbit, which is good, but better still, if they cooperate, they can have a stag. In a real life situation, we could have iterated personality games so that we interact with an uh, individual over time, repeatedly. It has been shown that in the iterative stag hunt game, uh, there's an emergence of trust and cooperation. In an analogy, in the natural equilibrium of the personality game, if we have iterated interactions, we could have a shift to the Pareto efficient situation. So personality game model would predict the dynamics of personality expression, which would include a mechanism of communication-induced personality change. On the application side, in the build-up of artificial personality, we could incorporate personality game like the one described here to develop uh, personalities in artificial agents. To conclude, subjects are aware of the dissociation of the personality assessment by the self and others. On top of that, I suggest that personality traits could emerge as a social construct through iterated personality games.